On this same history, May 24th, 2016, the Kaduna state government declared a state of emergency due to what was called tomato Ebola. It's a moth that actually goes by the name tomato leaf miner or tuta absoluta. But this, you know, moth began to ravage farms in the north and north central so much that, you know, farmers started to call it uh, by the nickname tomato Ebola. So this moth basically lays eggs on tomato plants, tomato leaves, and the larva begins to consume the leaves of the tomato plant. And they say that at the end of the day, you know, even if you spray, you know, insecticides and all of that, you know, chemicals on the plants, that the larva basically comes back or the moths basically come back after three hours. So it was, it was a big issue back in 2016 because it was found that this moth, this tomato Ebola, could also attack peppers and potatoes. So um, based on just how much this was, you know, it caused scarcity of tomatoes. Tomatoes began to, you know, the prices began to skyrocket. And we remember how Nigerians use memes to, you know, just joke about the scarcity of tomatoes. Remember when onion was scarce and just how much Nigerians, you know, joked about that on social media. It was the same thing back in 2016. You know, um, when this tomato uh, scarcity, you know, came about because of this tomato Ebola. So on this day in history, the, the government in, in Kaduna declared a state of emergency because apparently the United Nations had declared Kaduna state the capital of tomatoes in Nigeria. So they declared a state of emergency saying farmers had lost a lot. Some sources say up to 1 billion naira, others say up to up to 5 billion naira that Nigerian farmers have lost. Over 200 uh, tomato farmers in Nigeria uh, were affected. Uh, and this affected as well as, uh, you know, about five states in the country. So it was, it was a big issue. You know, you go to restaurants, you might not be very satisfied with the color of the of your jollof rice you're served, but you take it like that because you know that the price of tomatoes are not friendly due to this very important issue. And uh, it, it challenged our food security. And we know that Nigeria began to look to Kenya for a solution. You know, the country sent experts to Kenya to try to see, you know, how exactly can we solve this problem? So it was on this day in history, uh, May 24th, 2016, that the Kaduna State Governor, Nati Erufai, uh, declared a state of emergency, you know, to convert tomato Ebola. Uh, just looking at those pictures makes me want to make some stew this morning. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> I just want to make some really, really interesting pot of stew Can this you morning. Cook though? <laughs> um, I remember, you know, that that period. You know, if you go to restaurants at that time, a lot of them weren't selling them. Um, then in the southeast, a lot of them weren't making stew anymore. So they started they stuck to what they call ufaku, um, which is you know banga mm -hmm. you know, stew, and that that was you know the only thing that was available in in a lot of restaurants at that time. Uh, if you were seeking you know regular rice and stew, you wouldn't find it in a lot of restaurants. Um, and um, it lasted for you know a couple of weeks you know, before things eventually went back to normal. Um, but um, it, it, it's also you know um, it, it, you know tells how you know we also need to expand you know, with regards to agriculture. Mm -hmm. um, you know it shouldn't be dependent on certain states. You know even if yes there are states that are known because of you know their contributions to the agricultural sector, um, but we should also be able to you know, grow, grow tomatoes, grow, you know, okra, grow pepper, grow onions and all of that in other parts of the country, hopefully, and develop, you know, other forms of agriculture that allow these things grow um, in different parts of the country, you know, so the, the south, uh, south should be able to have its own tomatoes. Mm -hmm. uh, the same way there's, you know, yams in different parts of the country, you know, and different species, if you call it that, of yams, um, same way we should have, you know, other types of tomatoes so that we're not fully dependent on one region. And if there is, you know, an Ebola, or tomato Ebola, like, you know, in this uh, situation, then, you know, we're still safe. Mm -hmm. Somehow, some way. Yes, that's what happened today in history. All right. Uh, let's also move to the year 2018. And this was, you know, in the era where there was the Me Too movement still making headlines across the world. On this day, a legendary actor, Morgan Freeman, was, of course, accused of sexual harassment. Um, he eventually apologized for following allegations of sexual misconduct made by eight different women and several other people. There was a particular production assistant who accused Freeman of harassing her for months during filming of a bank robbery comedy uh, going in style. Um, he said that, uh, or she rather said the 80-year-old touched her repeatedly, tried to lift her skirt and asked if she was wearing underwear. Uh, Morgan Freeman eventually apologized to anyone who felt uncomfortable or disrespected. 
The production assistant was among eight women to tell CNN they had been victims of harassment. He's also said uh, to have stared at women's breasts and asked uh, women to twirl for him. Another woman who was part of uh, the production staff in 2012 um, um, in the, the thriller Now You See Me alleges that Freeman harassed her and an assistant uh, by making crude comments about their bodies. Uh, CNN at that time reached out to Freeman's spokesperson for comments and at his request emailed him a detailed list of the accusations you know, against Morgan Freeman. And then, of course, later on, uh, Morgan Freeman apologized. I'm actually um, surprised that did it, this didn't go, you know, all the way, you know, like Bill Cosby or Kevin mm. Spacey or any of all those uh, people. Um, it seems the women decided to not, you know, go further with the cases. But there was no not. actual, like, rape charge. No, 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 no. It was just, it was just harassment. harassment. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't make it less worse, but yeah. the point is, like, he didn't go all the way. So I think that's, that, that's the answer to your question as to why... There were no, you know... Well, you know, the cancel culture since Me Too started didn't necessarily need anyone to go all the way. You know, there's people who have been canceled for simply, you know, making statements, you know, or, you know, um, you know, lifting skirts. You know, it's not the first time. Um, it really depends on, you know, if any of the victims decides to sue or decides to make, you know, a, you know, a case out mm -hmm. of it. You know, and, um, you know, how much publicity it, re it really, really gets, you know. So, mm -hmm. um, I would say lucky for him because other people have, you know, been, been you know, canceled for less. I'm lucky for him. He, you know, got out of it, you know, by making an apology to everyone who felt, you know, threatened and yeah. um, um, risky. But you know, everyone loves Morgan Freeman. Yeah, um, everyone yeah. loves Morgan Freeman's <laughs> voice. Everyone loves Morgan Freeman. But yeah, um, you know, even at that age, you know, at 80, if you're still, um, you know, seen as a threat in the industry because of uh, your um, mm -hmm. sexual harassment claims, you know, it's still a very, very sad picture to paint at 80. Um, no. Mm. I mean, I, I, I remember just, you know listening to some of the people who accused him and even you know reading from some of the experiences you know people saying while they're working on sets with morgan freeman whenever he has to come on set they remember not to wear any tight fitting clothes not to wear anything that would show their cleavage because of how morgan freeman would you know constantly stare at them you know another another lady talked about how she finished interviewing him she was trying to pull down her skirt and was like oh no don't pull it down just leave it that way mm. and you know how we just make comments like that and you know like you mentioned well, asking well, one of well, them what are you gonna do at 80 sir <laughs> <laughs> if she gives you a chance you what are you be gonna shocked. do <laughs> Don't you get 80-year-old man rapes to your baby? We read it in the newspapers. Oh, something. my God. So, <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> if she says, okay, yes, I'm attracted to you too, what are you going to do at 80? See, no, we, shouldn't, we shouldn't make jokes about this. This is no, a I'm serious, a serious <laughs> issue. So good for him that his apology, you know, he's, he, you know, he said, anyone who knows me or has worked with me knows I am not someone who would intentionally offend or knowingly make anyone feel uneasy. Morgan Freeman went on to say, I apologize for anyone who felt uncomfortable or disrespected. That was never my intent. So he was, he was forgiven, but we, we didn't forget. It's, yeah, it's here absolutely. in today's history. Um, yeah. Some things will stain, you know, the beautiful career that you've had for yeah. decades. You know, just a couple of incidents, uh, a couple of times when you lose control, you know, of yourself. Um, would stain and maybe even kill that career that you've had forever. Kevin Spacey is an example. Bill Cosby, who you know, was seen as everyone's uncle and everyone's father in the, in the, in the comedy industry. Harry Kelly is it, it was such a phenomenal um, part of um, the lives of millions of people across the world in the 80s and in the, in the 90s. Um, but look at how he ended. You know, same thing with R. Kelly. Um, you know, a couple of you know times in your in your, in your in your journey that you just lose control of yourself and you lack focus and you lack uh, self control. You know, over you know uh, people of the opposite sex or maybe even same sex um, can ruin that career that you've worked hard for for decades. And that is the reality of you know of life. Mm -hmm. All right, stay with us. Uh, we're taking a short break here. Moving into our first major conversation for today, uh, we're going to be speaking um, about petrol price deregulation. Governors, of course, over a couple of days ago, uh, agreed to uh, full deregulation and, of course, a petrol price that would be more than 380 naira a litre. We're getting into that discussion next here on The Breakfast. Stay with us.